Hey everybody, this is Biz from Busy Crochet and I just want to thank you so much for joining me for today's episode of What Now? This is the show where I help you take the next step in your crochet journey and we're going to be learning new steps. We're going to be talking about how to take an idea and go from maybe just a motif into a full-fledged project. Uh, we're in later episodes, we're going to be talking about how to take... Um, different kinds of stitches, just basic stitches, and figuring out how to make a project out of it. So um, for this week, we are going to be talking about, we are talking about the African flower motif. So that's this guy. This is what I'm calling the regular or traditional African flower motif because I do have a variation on the theme and I'm sorry, I keep forgetting which side is the camera. I do have a variation on the theme and uh, we're going to be in our next episode, we're going to be making a different project with the different um, African flower motifs. So we're going to be starting out with what I consider the traditional or the regular African flower motif. This is the one you're going to find pretty much everywhere. Um, I'm also going to be teaching you how to do the half motif so that if you are changing up the project and making yourself like a blanket or something like that, you can fill in the little edges that these hexagons make when you put them together. All right, so what you're going to need for this project is some scrap yarn. All I used was complete scrap yarn. So I just grabbed some balls of worsted weight. Now this is a Karen Simply Soft. This is a Hobby Lobby. I love this yarn. They're slightly different, but they don't affect anything, and they're pretty close in size. And then I used some white. And, okay, I used this color, but the ball was about this size when I started. So you really don't need a whole lot of any one color, except for maybe your main color. I used white, so I had a fairly large ball of this. But all in all, you're going to need about two ounces of yarn to make this. This is a great scrap buster and this is great especially if you've got even small balls like this and you want to just kind of move work them into the motifs themselves because the motifs are all different colors. You can use up scraps beautifully in this project. All right so I'm going to show you what we're going to be making today. We are working on this springtime flower pot cover. I have an eight inch. This is from my garden. So there's some schmutz in the bottom. Um, I did clean it up before I used it, but it didn't all come out. But um, we're going to be doing this so that you can make it to whatever size pot you have. This is, you don't have to go out and buy an eight inch pot. I mean, for you to just go in your backyard, find something pretty, or if you've got something on your tabletop now that you just want to make a pretty cover for, for spring, I want you to use what you have um, so that you can do a, a great stash buster for everything in your house. You know, like this isn't meant for you to go out and spend all kinds of extra money on to make a project with me. So um, some of the other things that you may want, you don't have to have. I, I do include instructions for making your own tie. Um, this guy here. I ended up finding in my stash some quarter inch ribbon. I am not I'm not a stalker of this stuff, so I don't usually have it, but I must have picked this up for scrapbooking about a hundred years ago. And um, it is really handy because it's just the right size for working through the beading that we're going to be creating here. And um, so like this is a three eighth inch. This is a quarter inch. They're really very close to each other. But I think you can get these for like 99 cents at Michael's or in the scrapbooking department at any of the craft um, stores. You can get these really, they're called Offrey micro spools. Of course, that's backwards on the, on the screen. But um, if you need a ribbon like that, you might already have something like that in your stash somewhere. So there's that. Other supplies that you're going to need, obviously, are, well, the scissors that I just dropped. You're going to need a large eye needle so that you can weave in your ends. I am using a number seven, four and a half millimeter hook for all of mine. 
You'll also need some kind of measuring device so that you can make yours custom to your pot. Um, other than that, the only other thing that I can think you might need is a stitch marker. Um, it doesn't matter what you use for a stitch marker. You could use scrap pieces of yarn like this and just tuck it in. And I do show you how to use all of that stuff if you're not already familiar with it. Otherwise, if you've got stitch markers like this, those work really great as well. Um, just because you, it is helpful to mark certain stitches and things like that as we're going through this. So I know this is kind of informal. This is my first video doing something like this. So I hope that we have fun together. I hope that you enjoy this project and I can't wait to see what you come up with. Hi there. In today's tutorial, we are going to be discussing how to make the regular sized African flower motif as well as the half motif. What you're going to need for today's tutorial is whatever hook size you need to obtain your gauge. You're going to want to have some kind of measuring device or tool. You'll want to have a large eye needle so that you can tuck in your ends, obviously a scissors for cutting your work, and at least three, if not four, scrap balls of color so that you can make a cute scrappy design for your flower pot today. Um, so I'm gonna get started with this one. We're gonna set the half size motif aside and we're gonna work on our regular size African flower motif. I'm gonna get my stuff together and uh, we'll get right on it. All right, for today's full size design, I am using a number seven, four and a half millimeter hook because I want to achieve about a five and a quarter inch going from tip to tip, about five inches going from side to side. My pot is 24 inches around, not at the widest point, but it was the only point that I could get it to stick enough because that sucker was slippery. So in order for me to get a number that I could use, I just took the spot that was closest to the widest point. This being yarn, it's going to stretch for me. So I'm not really worried about whether or not it's going to fit. Um, I used a larger hook, a J hook, to make a larger sized motif. But when I went to measure it on my uh, pot, it was way too big. So it was, it was flopping over the edges and it was not going to, I was not going to be able to get the same amount of motifs or, you know, an equal number of motifs going around. And so I had to take a different size hook. So the original pattern calls for a J hook. I went down two hook sizes. Actually, it might be more J I, H, yeah, so I went down um, roughly three hook sizes in order to achieve this particular motif. And as you can see, it's considerably smaller than the J hook motif. And that's why I said you're going to need to use the, the size hook that you need to get your measurements. So there's going to be a little bit of math, but it doesn't have to be intimidating. We're going to work through all of that here. Um, so get whatever hook you think you need to start with or maybe make a practice motif from the instructions today and then we can move on from there to construct our pretty pot cover that we're making for our spring and summertime tables all right so i am going to continue on i've already made a slip knot and put the loop on my hook I am changing up my colors just a little bit. The fun part of this is that you can put any color combination together that you want. That's why scraps are absolutely great for this. I'm using a number four weight yarn. Um, but the one thing that I am going to do with, to create consistency and so that I've got a base color for the background is I'm going to stick with white to be my outer. But the in, inner part here is where I get to play with colors and do whatever I want and make it fun. All right, so I'm going to start with green since the last time I started with blue. And I'm going to chain five, two, three, four, and five. I'm going to take 
I don't know why I can't grab that. There we go. We're going to go all the way back to the beginning and we're going to slip stitch into that first loop chain in order to create a small circle. All right, and from there, I'm going to chain three, two, three. That's gonna count as our first double crochet. Go ahead in this circle that we just created and put another double crochet. Now, our repeat is going to be, and so I chained one. Our repeat is gonna be two double crochets, chain one five more times. So we're going to have a total of 12 double crochets and six chain one spaces when we're done. So we've got one repeat, two repeat, three, four, and I'm gonna scoot it a little bit, five. There we go. And my last chain one. And now we've got this circle and here's our first chain three. I'm going to connect to that first chain three because that does count as a double crochet. And I'm going to go ahead and cut this color because I just want to have a little bit in the center in that color. So find your chain one spaces. This one because it creates a little bit of a gap there. So just remember that's not a chain one space. That's your beginning chain and your first double crochet. So your chain one's gonna come right after that and then in between. So just, I'm just having you locate so that you can count, make sure you've got the appropriate number of double crochets and the appropriate number of chain one spaces before we move on, because you are going to need them. All right, so now we want to create like the petal color. We're gonna be doing this section right here. So whatever you're going to choose for that, I am going to go ahead with I do blue or purple. I'm going to do blue. We'll do blue. All right. So in one of those chain one spaces, it doesn't matter which one you choose. I kind of like to start to the right of whatever my, my little tail is because I catch that in as I go around. So in the chain one space, Go ahead and once again pull up a chain three and put another double crochet in that chain one space now we're going to be creating the little kind of base of our petal here so in order to do that we are going to in each one of these chain one spaces go two double crochets chain one and two double crochets we're not going to chain in between any of these spaces we're only putting that chain one space in that same chain one space does that make sense so two chain one two now skip don't chain anything extra go into the next chain one space and two chain one and two I'm going to go back and tuck all these ends in later and skip over these two double crochets into the next chain one, two, chain one, and two. All right, do that one, two, three more times, and I'll be back after I complete my round. All right, I've gotten to the end of that round. Now I'm going to join up with that first chain three our first double crochet i'm going to slip stitch to join that all right and at this point if you lay it down you should begin to see the bit of a hexagon showing up in your work all right so i'm going to slip stitch now into the next stitch and then slip stitch into the chain one space here we're going to create the petal portion of our flower. So I'm going to chain three. That's a double crochet again. And I'm going to put six more double crochets into this chain one space. So we're going to create a fan. 
So that's two. I need a total of seven. Three, four, five, six, seven. I apologize if you can hear my little dog in the background. She's a grunter. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And no matter what I tell her, she doesn't stop. So we might have a little bit of doggy music in the background. All right, so we're going to now skip everything in between the chain one spaces, and we're gonna put another seven double crochets into the next chain one space. And I have a habit of going back and counting my stitches because I also tend to leave one off for whatever reason. I'll do six, but I'll forget the seventh one. So I count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, it's just a, a habit that I've gotten into because I've made the mistake so many times. There's three, four, five, six. And it's easy to do, especially if you're making a bunch of these for like an afghan or something. Super easy. And one, two, or if you're getting distracted by somebody chattering at you, like I'm doing now. All right, five, six, and seven. Okay, go ahead, finish up those last two. I'll be right back. All right, so we have come to the end of this round and I'm going to connect to the chain three again with a slip stitch. And then I'm gonna cut this color and I'm gonna join with color number three. I'm gonna use this purple. And this is where it's fun to use stash. These are not all the same yarn line. They're all considered number four weight. However, this is this is like a Karen Simply Soft, and this is like a Red Heart or a, and I love this yarn weight. So it is slightly different, but I don't feel like it pulls away from or changes the size and texture of this enough to not use it. So I'm going to put in this pretty little line right here that accents all of the um, petals on the flower. And so that is, we are going to join with any one of the first double crochets of any one of your petals. It doesn't make a difference which one. So go into that first single crochet, or I'm sorry, double crochet, and pull up a loop, chain one. And now, I'm sorry, I'm just gathering my, there we go. And single into that, and to each, one of the double crochets in the petal. So this can be a total of seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Don't do these real tight because it is going to pull it a little bit. Now in between, we have this space here. Yes, there's a single crochet or a double crochet right there, and we are going to single into that. But this space right here, we're going to fill with this long double crochet right here. And how we do that is yarn over. Now go all the way down here to this plateau or loop or however you wanna call it and go around both. Now don't pull this real tight and don't make it super loose either. You're gonna to have to play with it a little bit if you've never done it before just to get that right feel. So um, pull it so that it's creating this line here without yanking or without being so loose that it doesn't do anything. Okay, so now go into the next double and you're gonna single into the next seven doubles. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, so now we're gonna do that long double crochet again. Yarn over, go around the space in between, working it up, pulling, but not too tightly, not too loosely. All right, and then finish off your double crochet. And single into the next seven. That's three, four, 
five, six, and seven. We're gonna do that long double crochet again. Yarn over, go down, pull up. Okay, and see I made my loop a little bit loose, but it's gonna get hidden. So it's not always perfect. All right, so I'm going to continue finishing off the last three of these loops. I'll come back and finish this last little bit up with you. Um, so I'll be right back. Alrighty, I'm back to where I started. I'm gonna put that last long double crochet in there. And then we just join with a slip stitch to the first. All right, before I go any further and before I finish this off with the white, I'm going to go ahead and tuck in my ends. I'll be right back. And I just realized that I should probably do this with you as well, just in case you're not real familiar with tucking in your ends. If you are, go ahead and skip forward in the video to where we get to the good part and finish off this African flower. But if not, and you would like to see what I do, um, I have a tendency to just stick my needle in to my work first because these little ends are not always long enough to manipulate the needle outside of the work um and so out of habit i do that um but now what i'm doing is i brought this color to the back of the work and now i'm going to go in the loops in the back that's already there and i don't want it to get caught up in what i'm doing all right, so I pull through there. Now, when I go back, I only go so far because I don't need to um, weave it in super, super long distances or anything like that. You can achieve a very snug uh, finish without having to use a lot of yarn. All right, so what I do when I go back is I will catch this piece. I'll go over the top of it as opposed to going back under because you will undo what you just did. So I either go the one after and go underneath it, or I will just go over the one that I just came through and pull. And then I only pull so snugly because I don't want it to yank and make a hole there. But really, unless you know what you're looking for, you're never going to see that. So then I just snip that off. This little end might poke out. You can trim it as tight as you want. Um, I'm going to leave that the way that it is right now. So this one, because it's not a very long piece, but I do want to tuck it back in. So I'm going to put my needle in where I am planning to go. So I'm skipping over this one here and going right into the loops behind. So as you see, when I'm putting this in my needle... I'm already going to be catching this guy. And I'm gonna hold that because this is giving me a hard time. And see how that pulls and it makes a hole. So I'll just pull back on it a little bit and loosen it up. And then I'm going to snip the little ends poking out with my scissors. So once you're looking at this and you've got it twisted around, unless you know what you're looking for, you're really not going to see my ends tucked in. All right, so I'm going to finish up the rest of this and I'll be right back. Alrighty, all my ends are tucked in. We're ready to go. And I use that same yarn tucking technique for everything that I make, including clothing, and I've never had anything come apart. The only thing I've ever had to perform like surgery on are items that I would just, I didn't go back and tuck those extra ends in. I would just um, catch it as I, you know, crocheted over it. That doesn't hold it in. So even stuff that I crochet over, I'll leave a little tag out so that I can go back and tuck it in tight. All right, so we're going to be putting the border on to and creating that, that firm hexagon look and giving us some straight edges to work with. So we're going to start with the center uh, single crochet of our petals. 
So what I do is I usually find my first and my last single crochet, and then I will work my way back until I find that center one. Maybe you just know where it is. It's just a habit of mine to do that. Um, and maybe it's a tip that'll help you too, just in case your stitches are kind of um, worked in there or maybe you can't see them that easy. So anyway, in all of that talking, I joined with my outside color and I did a chain three, which is going to count again as a double crochet. I'm going to put two doubles into... All right, and now I'm going to double crochet into the next seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're gonna end up over here and then we're gonna do three double crochets into that. We're creating corners when we do those three double crochets. So here's our straight side. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And now we're going to put three into the next and create a corner. All right, and so now do seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Now do three again. One, two, three. All right, so I'm just gonna set this down here. I'm gonna use a little scrap piece. All right, just to show you that this is the kind of corner that we're creating on each one of these points so that our hexagon looks like that. All right, I want you to finish this up Go ahead and complete the white around, putting three double crochets into that corner single. And then when you get over here, slip stitch to the first chain three, and you can go ahead and cut your yarn. Now leave a nice long end so that you can attach it to other motifs. Um, I just find that the easiest way to do it, if because I have a tendency to whip stitch everything together, I just like the way that it looks. All right, so um, go ahead and finish this out and I will see you over here. All right, well done on completing your full-size African flower motif. Make sure to tuck it in your ends in the back if you haven't done so already. And um, if you didn't leave a long, I'll show you how to, to um, connect it later anyway, but um, go ahead and set this aside because we are now going to learn how to make the half African flower motif so that we can fill in all of the empty spots on our flower pot cover. All right, we are going to create the half motif now. So what we're going to do is start with a slip stitch again. And I've already got one on my on my hook my instructions keep falling over and we are going to start this one a little bit different we're going to chain four two three and four we're going to once again make a circle and then we're going to chain four again two three four this is counting as a double crochet plus a chain one so now we are going to do the two double crochet chain one three times in the center circle. So one, repeat, two, repeat, three, repeat, all right, and then the last thing that we're going to do is put a double crochet into the circle. So we're doing kind of half of what we would normally do, but um, go ahead and cut that off. 
set it aside. Now, I'm going to go back over here where my chain four is, and I'm gonna go into the third chain. That is my double crochet, <clears throat> excuse me. And I am going to use my green and pull it in. We are going to start with another chain four, one, two, three, four, which is once again, a double crochet plus a chain one. And now in this chain one space that we created, we're going to put two double crochets. Now we're going to create that same base for our, for our flowers like we did in here, only we're doing half C size. So this right here, this two right here is this right here. Okay, so into your next chain one, we're gonna go two double crochet, chain one, two double crochet. <clears throat> Excuse me, skip the next two double crochets, do that again in the next chain one, two, chain one, and two, and now skip the last two double crochets in that last chain one space, put two, and a chain one, and then double into that last double. If you can find it, there we go. Now I am going to turn my work, but I'm gonna chain one. We're going to flip our work over so that we're working on the wrong side for this one. This is the only time we're going to be working on the wrong side of these is when we're doing the half motif. So <clears throat> from here, I want you to chain two more. So we have a chain three, and then we're going to three double crochet into the chain one space. So we're doing like a half of a petal here. Skip all of this in here and go to the next chain one space. Do seven double crochet. three, four, five, six, and seven. Do that again, skip these guys, the four double crochet, and go into the next chain one space and do seven, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. All right, we are back over to the other side now. <clears throat> Excuse me again. Um, skip the four, double crochet into this chain one space that we made with our original chain four. Put three, one, two, and three. And now I want you to find the third chain. So one, two, three, that's our double crochet. And I want you to double crochet into the third chain of the chain four that we originally started with. Go ahead and cut your yarn and flip it back over so that you're working on what we're gonna call the right side. Now, if you need to use, um, I didn't mention these before, but if you need to do something to mark the front side of your work, just in case you have a hard time remembering, and I've got a big old mess here. There we go. So that you remember what side is what as we're working here. So you don't have to have that. You can also use just a um, scrap piece of, of yarn and just mark that however you want to do it. Whatever makes your life the easiest. All right. So let me then... Okay, so we're gonna take color number three. And with the right side facing us, we're going to join into 
the first double crochet with a chain one and we're going to single in there and into the next three two three so you should have a total of four single crochets going across now we are going to do what's called a long double crochet and we're going to do it over the two bridges that we have here just like we did on the other one and you do the same thing yarn over go over all of the work pull up a loop not so that it's tight not too loose and finish your double crochet and then single into the next seven two three four five six and seven all right in that space over those bridges we're going to do the long double crochet again and then single into seven four five six and seven let's do the long double crochet one last time and then single into the last four double crochets treating that chain three as a double go ahead and cut that off all right before i finish this up with my white i'm going to go in here and i'm going to tuck in all my ends otherwise they're going to end up in my way all right all my ends are tucked in and i am ready to move on with my outside color once again i'm using white so I'm going to go to the right side of my work and start in the very first single crochet over here. For some reason, I decided to make it nice and tight. All right, so we're going to start with a chain three. This is going to, once again, be a double crochet and in this one, we are going to do another double crochet in that joint space. This is going to count as two double crochets in that spot. Now I want you to double into seven. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six and seven once again we're going to be creating our corners so put three one two and three now let's do seven again one two three four, five, six, and seven. One, two, three, and then the last seven. One, two, three, I just split my yarn, four, five, six, seven, and you're going to have one left over. So you're going to put two doubles into that last single. One and two. Don't cut this off yet. Chain one. <clears throat> we're going to put single crochets into the row end so that we can kind of hide all of that ugliness on the end there. All right, so working in the row ends, we're going to single crochet around, do two in each double crochet row end, one in each single crochet row end. So that's a double, that gets two.
the little circle in the middle, I'm just going to put one in there. You could put two, you could, this is really, you fill this in however you want. If you feel like it's too sparse and it needs more single crochets going across, you fill it in how you like it. This is going to be the top edge of your um, pot cover and um, we're going to probably do a finishing single crochet row anyway. All right, so I went into the top of the chain three that I started with over here because it is our last double crochet. And I didn't leave a long end, I should have. But um, that's what the half motif looks like. You can kind of adjust it. Yarn is very pliable, obviously. So um, that's our half motif. I'm gonna show you next how to put everything together. Okay, so this is kind of the finished look that we're going for when we're putting our motifs together. I'm going to show you how to put these together um, before we show you the, the final product and how many that you should have going around. But I'm going to start with, I'm going to push these guys aside and we're going to start with the two half motifs. Now, I forgot to leave long ends, so this is a good opportunity to show you how to get this started in case you're not real familiar with whip stitching your pieces together. If you are very familiar with this, you don't have to watch this part of the video. Um, at this point, you could just start putting your pieces together and um, skip to the end where we do the finishing row to um, complete the look. But I want you to put, if you're not familiar with putting pieces together, let's go ahead and do that together. So I want you to flip this so that your right sides are meeting, okay? And so you want your wrong sides facing you. And what I'm gonna do real quick is kind of attach my yarn. So I'm gonna do kind of that same thing that I do to tuck in my ends. The reason I'm doing it this way is because I want my yarn to come up over here. So I'm actually going the opposite direction first. So I'm securing my yarn, going this way, and then I'm coming back, catching this little guy here so that it doesn't come undone. And now I've got a secure way to start my yarn, working it in to this without having to make a knot or have some unsightly seam in there that I don't want. And now I'm just going to weave it up the back side of the work so that I'm starting at the top. Now, when you've got your right sides together, your aim is to match up these stitches as you've gone along here. You've got the exact same stitches on the opposite side. So you want to start with the middle of these stitches. And that's where I have my yarn coming out is the middle stitch. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over the top of everything and I'm going to put my yarn or my yarn needle through the back and then right back through the loops of the stitch that I wanted to start at. So I'm matching it up stitch for stitch as I'm going across and I just pull. You don't have to pull real tight, just snug it up. So doing that, you've basically lined yourself up so that you are going through all of the same stitches. Now this is another place where you could use um, a stitch marker to mark the next middle stitch. You could use a little scrap piece of yarn. You don't have to have anything fancy. You don't even have to mark these stitches if you don't want to. I'm doing it just so that I have a visual of where I'm gonna end up over here, okay? So I'm just showing you two different ways to mark your stitches. So as I'm going along, I'm going to be going and just working over the top as I go across, like so. 
matching up stitch for stitch, working through all four loops. So when I get over to the other side, I should be exactly lined up with the middle stitch on the other corner. All right, so this is the stitch before. There's the stitch before, that's the one I'm going into. Perfect. This is why counting and making sure that your stitch counts are right is very important no matter what you're going to be making or putting together. All right, so I'm only going corner to corner. The reason I'm doing that is because I want to leave all of these available to tuck this guy in here like that. Now, I would love to see somebody take these half motifs and figure out a way to make little butterflies out of that. Wouldn't that be cute? All right. I'm going to just go ahead and clip that off. Put that over here. Now, it doesn't matter unless it matters to you where the colors are as far as this is concerned. I'm putting my yarn so that it's so that when I put my right sides together, my yarn is starting up on this corner. I'm going to have to do a little bit of adjusting because of where my yarn ended on that corner. So what I'm going to do, because of where it ended over here, I'm actually going to move it so that it's coming out on the stitch I want it to come out on. So it's starting there again, right? So we're going to do the same thing that we did with these guys. We're going to put our right sides together. Now this is going to look a little funky to begin with just because when you put your right sides together, of course it doesn't, you know, it doesn't look like it fits. We obviously have to make the adjustment where we're doing side and then doing side. So we're going to start with this side. This stitch right here, this is the um, single crochet that we ended up with, but we are working into the top of the double crochet that we ended with, which this is going to be our middle of what would have been a corner, okay? So that's why we did two to start with over here is because we have the middle and then the next one in line. So when we go to put this together, we're doing middle to middle and now everything should line up once again right across so second one in line so one now that should be the seven there's one two three four Oh gosh, I hope I don't have this off screen. Five, six, and seven. So this is going to be the stitch before, we just went through this one. This is the stitch before the middle, which is perfectly where we wanted it to be. And if you can tell by the back side of your work, that's where we're, we want to be. So match those up. Now this is how I work my corners when I've only got one here, but I've got a couple here. I'm going to go into this corner from the first piece and then I'm going to go into the corner on the second piece and go right back into that corner stitch. So what it does is it snugs everybody up in the corner. You're never really going to see this and it keeps there from being a large hole in that spot. All right, so let's start matching up our ends again. we should end with the middle of this one being the last one of this one. If we did it right. All right, so I meant what would be the second to last because remember we did the single crochets across here, but we have to really 
take into account we're just working into the top of the double crochet which is covered up in single crochets but these two loops right here are that double crochet so we are going into the loops here for the second to last and then we're taking the loops from the double crochet and going into that center of the corner all right we have completed what we want to so i'm going to weave my yarn back down and i'm going to secure my ends like i normally do weaving back and forth and catching the one loop okay there's that now there's our pieces together now while this looks a little bit funky right here remember I said we're going to do a finishing row so that this all lines up and it's going to be pretty um, you won't see the jogs in in the pieces when we're finished okay so I want you to go ahead and do the same thing with all of the remaining pieces that you have for your um, flower cover I'm going to do the exact same thing on this side and all my future pieces I'll be back when I've got all of my pieces together so that we can do that last finishing round before we put it on our pot Hey there, so I wanted to show you where we're at with our pot cover at this point. We have this sleeve that looks like this that we are going to pop our pot into. And this is how it's going to sit in there. But what I'm discovering is that there's a lot of space on the bottom. So what I'm going to do is we're going to do some decreasing along the bottom edge of this pot cover so that it doesn't wrap around the bottom we don't want there to be water getting on this even though this is something that you can take off i'm planning on leaving mine on my uh table outside and i can take this off and throw it in the washer if i want to because it's acrylic but i don't necessarily want there to be yarn underneath my pot as it's sitting there so i'm going to do some we're going to do some decreasing on this edge so this, these are things that you can leave off of your pot cover if you want to. You are not obligated to put these there. If you want to stop where you're at, slide your pot in there and put it on a table, you're good to go. However, I'm going to decrease my bottom just a little bit. So if you want to do that, go ahead and continue on with the video. Okay, so here we have our pot cover and it's that kind of tube shape, almost like a headband, but a little bit bigger. Um, I went ahead and I marked which side I wanted to be my top um, so that I can make sure that I don't forget which side I'm working on. It's kind of hard to forget once you choose a side, but I just did that in case you need a reminder. Sometimes I need a reminder. So what I'm going to do is I flipped it now so that I'm working with the bottom side of it, but the right side of the work facing me still. So I'm going to go into the very last single crochet of one of our half motifs. I'm going to put my hook in there and I'm going to draw up a loop and chain one. Now what I'm going to do is decrease in some strategic spots to bring the base of this tube kind of tighter so that it fits better around the bottom of my pot. And in doing that, we're going to put all of our decreases across full motifs, not across any of our half motifs. Our half motifs, once we do this decrease that we're going to do in each of the corners, and then we're going to do an, another one in the center of the full motif, once we get those done, we're just going to slip stitch in the remainder of the stitches across the half motif. I'll do this with you so that you can see what I'm talking about. Um, but let's go ahead and start with our first decrease. So we're going to go back into where we joined, pull up a loop, skipping where we whip stitched everything together and working into the loops of that center double crochet from the full motif. We're going to pull up another and we're going to complete that decrease. 
Now I want you to single into three. There should be nine stitches between your two corner stitches going across this motif. So single into three. One, two, three. Now I want you to do a three single crochet decrease. And by how to do that, if you've never done one before, is pull up a loop, go into the next and pull up a loop, go into the next and pull up a loop. So you've gone into three separate sing or not single crochets, but three different double crochets and pulled up a loop. You should have four on your hook and now you're gonna pull through all four of them. That is a three single crochet decrease. So now we're going to single into the last three before the corner. And now we're at that corner double crochet again. We're going to decrease here again to pull up a loop and then skipping the whip stitching, go into the first stitch of our half motif and decrease. Now, <clears throat> all of the stitches between here and the last stitch over here, slip stitch going across. This just helps strengthen those stitches and you know tidies up the edging without adding any extra bulk. I don't wanna add more inches going this way because we've already achieved the height that we want to for our pot. Now, if you have a different kind of pot and you want to add more space to that, then go ahead and single crochet across here if you want. You can really do any kind of decorative border that you want on this. I'm trying to keep mine very, very simple across the bottom. All right, so now we're at our last single crochet. So we're going to pull up a loop, skip our whip stitching, and go into the middle loops from our full motif and finish that decrease. And then we're gonna single into three one and two and three. Now do your three single crochet decrease. So pull up a loop, pull up a loop, pull up a loop, and now pull through all four loops and then single in the last three. One, two, and three. Now Pull up a loop and pull up a loop and decrease. All right, so this should not be, this decrease should not be a great big conspicuous chunky thing in your work. It should be kind of on the minimal side. So I want you to continue to do the slip stitch across your half, do your decrease, your three, your decrease, your three, your decrease all the way around to our first decrease, which is right here. This would be another one too, like if you have a hard time finding where you start and stop, it's a good thing to just maybe throw a piece of scrap yarn in there if you need to just pull an end through, just to mark it so that you can see where you started and where you have to stop, it kind of helps if a project feels like it's going too long, you're like, oh God, when is this going to end? You can at least look and see. So um, go ahead, finish this up. I'll be back when I finish my round and then we'll flip it over and we'll do the top. All right, so I've completed my decreases along the bottom edge. You can see how it kind of pulls it in on a slight curve. That's okay. That's going to be just fine because we're going to be working it so that the top of this kind of fans out just a little bit. But in trying this on my pot, I have realized that it doesn't want to stay up really nice. So what we're going to do is we're going to add what's called beading, um, which is just basically um, taking double crochets and half double crochets and creating the um, space, like a little ladder where you weave a tie through it. That's called beading. So we are going to start, see where I have my um, my little indicator I'm going to go into the stitch to the right of that just because that's the first stitch of this half motif. Now we're going to be working two different sets of stitches between these two motifs because of their height difference. I want this all to end up the same height when I'm done. So I am going to be putting half double crochets on my half motifs and double crochets on my full motifs. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. 
we are going to start with pulling up a loop in our first single crochet from that half motif and we're going to chain three. This is gonna count as a half double crochet plus a chain one. Now we are going to skip one and we're gonna half double crochet in the next one. And we're gonna chain one. And we're gonna do it again, skip, half double crochet, chain one, skip, half, chain, skip, half, chain. Finish that across this motif. And if you did each one of these um, so that they were all exactly alike when you were done with them. So like making sure that you do the same amount of stitches going across here, you should have it so that um, you can do a stitch, skip one stitch and have it line up at the same spot every time. So mine for my half double crochets line up going across from one side to the other perfectly, which is great. So chain one, and I am going to skip my middle stitch here, and I'm going to double into the next one. Now, does that make kind of a big hole there? Yes, it doesn't really matter because it's all gonna be hidden eventually anyway. So we're, this time we're going to be doing double chain one, skip one. So skip and double into this one and chain one. Skip, double, chain one. Skip, double, chain one. Skip, double. All right, so I'm skipping that middle stitch again. I'm gonna put my half double crochet into the first stitch of the half motif, chain one. Do you see how I'm just changing back and forth between the two different size stitches? And even though it makes this big old hole right here, that really, that's not gonna make a hill of beans when we're done. So, because we're going to create a cute tie or you could get some indoor outdoor ribbon or something super cute. Oh, that inspires me to drag out my ribbon. Okay, so we'll, I'll show you how to make a tie, but I'm gonna finish mine off with ribbon, I think, because it's an opportunity to finally use some. I have this stash of ribbon that I inherited from someone and I don't, I don't have anything to use it on. So I'm gonna use it on this. Da -da -da -da. All right, and finishing up my last half double crochet in my last. So this is why I say symmetry matters. Like, you know, if you're going to um, put stitches in, make sure you do every single one the same because then when you do your finishing work, it just makes life so much easier. All right, so skipping over that center, going into the next double and double. So chain one, skip double into the net. Okay, let, we'll do that again. Double into the next. And the last one before, the last one before my middle one here. And into the first. All right. I'm gonna let you finish up going around, putting your beading in. Don't cut this yarn once you get to the end. Just slip stitch to that first chain two. So you're gonna go into the second chain that you made, not the top one, because that's our chain one there. All right, I'll see you in a little bit. All right, so in assessing, further assessing my work as I'm going along here, I realized that I am up to the top. So I'm gonna show you how to do a fan if you want to finish this out with a more lacy edging. 
I am personally going to finish this off with just a single crochet border. A single crochet border literally is just chain one and single into each stitch and each chain space going around. And it just finishes it off nice and clean along the top. Now, if you want to do a fan border, my suggestion to you is to chain one, single crochet into this one, the first stitch. Now, a fan usually covers anywhere from five to six stitches. So you're, I would take this and do double crochet fan and then that into the next stitch. So I would do probably six stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And you say, why six? Usually because it's a nice number that helps to pull the whole fan over and it doesn't stretch it really bad. Because sometimes you can get it and then I would single into the next half double. Okay. Um, but anyway, back to Y6, because like I said, it helps the fan go all the way across. If you do five or less, you're going to have a very short fan and you're going to need to do something like putting a uh, chain one space or something in between the double crochets you have over here and the double crochets you have over here because it doesn't want to stretch. Um, so that's why I would do six to seven to do a nice full fan. But here's where you might run into a problem if you haven't counted it out or taken it into account that you're going to want to do fans while you're doing this is now I would go through and I would count every every other one to make sure that I would be able to end up with a fan over here. So fan, and then obviously you're skipping one. So fan, 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 fan. This is the super non-scientific way of doing this. Fan, 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 fan. Okay. My fans would end up here and I would probably need to, unless I don't care. I mean, like if you don't care how this ends up, if you don't care about symmetry and that it ends up in the exact same spot each time, then, you know, by all means do it. And I would probably, if I really wanted these on here, I would probably do it anyway, just because I'm not bothered by things not necessarily having the exact same amount of stuff going around. Because if I know that I'm going to end up with a single crochet here, to me, it really just is not the end of the world that there's not, because this fan's going to be close enough, that'll close up that gap and you're not really going to see it anyway. So, you know, once you get your ribbon in here and things are pulled tight, nobody's going to be counting to make sure that you had the exact amount of fans going around and that it finished right here where it's supposed to. So just let that, you know, if you have a problem with perfectionism, let it go. Let it go, let it go. So don't let it hold you back anymore. Um, and go ahead and put whatever makes your heart happy as a finishing edge on this project. Like I said, I am going to finish off with a straight single crochet edge just because I'm a real clean lines kind of person. And um, the fans are going to go up over the top of the pot that I have and I don't want that so I'm going to finish this up and I'm going to get out my ribbon and then I'll show you how what it looks like at the end okay my top edge is done my beading has been completed and my single crochets are all the way around the top and I promised you that I was going to show you how to make your own tie in case you don't have ribbon. I found a the best size for this size hole in my ribbon collection was an Offre micro spool. It's a quarter inch by six feet. I don't think I'm going to need the full six feet, but I've got plenty to work with here. So I found it in this cute little purple gingham, and I'm going to put that on here at the top 
to tie it and make a cute little bow, but I'm going to show you how to make a um, tie just in case you don't have any ribbon on hand. All right, so the first thing that I would do, go ahead and make your slip knot. And I tend to chain, um, like for a typical kid size bag that stops about here, I do about a hundred, but you're going to want some space to go around. So we're going to chain probably 150 to 175. Let's just pick a number. We'll do, we'll do 175. All right. I'm not going to make you watch me do this whole thing. So I'll see you at 175. Alrighty, I've got my 175 chained. Now here's the part where I will measure before I make a final decision on whether that's going to be long enough for me or not. Or do, can I possibly take it down and use less chains? So I'm going to kind of set it behind because we're going to pretend like this is as if we have woven them in and pull it over and then pull it around and over. This is where my chain is going to end. Plus we're going to pull it a little bit tighter to make a bow. I feel like this is plenty long enough to have not only a tie, but I can also create a cute little bow when I pull it in and make it a little bit tighter around my pot. So you want to make sure that you've got enough space to not only overlap, but also to um, make a, a pretty bow at the end when you're done. So what we're going to be doing is um, we're literally just going to slip stitch into each of the um, chains going across. So like as if you were starting something else, you're going to skip that first chain, slip stitch into the second from the hook, and just slip stitch your way all the way across because what you're doing right now is creating just just like a rope you know kind of like when knitters make an i cord or something like that this isn't quite an i cord but it has the same general stability to it and it makes a nice a fairly finished looking piece to tie off with um, the only thing that I can suggest is if you want it to be stronger, once you get to the end, you can flip it and and work an additional slip stitch down the back side of the chain that you started with. And that'll add kind of like a third um, cord to it and will create more of a corded look to it. Um, but if you are okay with just creating a simple tie like this, this is nice and fast and simple, and you can, once you're done getting this all uh, stitched up, you just then weave it in and out like you would a regular tie. Okay, so I'm going to set this aside, and I'm going to get my, my uh, ribbon woven into mine, and I'm going to get my pot finished. Once again, thank you so much for joining me today. If you had fun and you want to make some more projects with me, make sure that you hit the subscribe button as well as the notification button so you know when each new episode is loaded. I'll see you next time.